Today we're gonna to go through everything that's involved in finding the perfect adventure boot. Stick around. Hey, this is Chad with Be Gone For Good. We do videos all about adventure motorcycling from the bikes we ride, the trips we take, tips, tricks, tutorials, everything under the sun when it comes to adventure motorcycling. You're gonna find it on this channel. If that sounds like something that interests you, definitely subscribe below. But for right now, let me get into what we're really talking about. If you've been watching this channel for any amount of time, or even if you've been an adventure biker for any amount of time, you know how difficult it has been for you and for me to find the right adventure boot for the type of riding that we do because it goes everywhere from miles and miles and miles of highway riding to some really heavy duty off-road technical stuff. We wanna be able to hike a little bit and have something comfortable, but we also wanna make sure that our ankle doesn't get crushed. All of those different considerations kind of come smashing together to create the ADV environment. And this deals with all sorts of gear, but mostly it's really focused on your feet and what you're gonna be wearing out there to provide you the best amount of protection at the greatest comfort and all these different kind of competing different categories. So I'm gonna run through my thoughts on this and, and how I got to where I eventually ended up and some of the steps that I took along the way to get there. First, you must know that from Jump Street, right when I started riding back in 2016, I bought a single boot and it took me through every riding that I did out to the Badlands, across uh, most of the United States, down to Honduras and back, all that riding through wet, through snow, through good and bad, I wore this boot. Now, that boot is the Garn. Now, uh, it's like the, it, whatever this is, I, I don't remember the exact model, but there is, there is nothing here. There's no ankle, there's nothing on the toe, anywhere. Like this whole thing, short of this little piece of plastic right here, it's just leather. It is the most comfortable boot you will ever find. And I loved it. I absolutely loved riding in this thing. It's Gore-Tex, so it didn't leak or anything. Uh, it has a um, exchangeable sole, like a sewn-on sole, so you can get a new sole on there. Clearly, I haven't done that. But the boot itself is great, and it's super comfortable. I have spent entire days in this where I wasn't even on the bike, where I was just walking around like I, I biked to work, and then I wore this at work for the entire day, biked home for 10 minutes, and, and this boot was on me. So that should give you kind of a gauge of where I started my boot uh, experience, right? I was super, super comfortable, zero protection. This is what I rode. When we went to Utah and we did Lockhart, this is the boot that I was in. Now, if you don't know about Lockhart, you can watch my video here, but this is not the boot that I should have been wearing in Lockhart, but this is what I wore always for everything. As this started to wear down and as I started to realize that it's time for me to look for new boots, I started thinking about what was gonna be important to me in, in a boot. And I liked that this was waterproof, but I also wanted serious, serious protection. Uh, after taking a class with Brett Tax, he talks about going for the most protection you can possibly find. And if it's comfortable to walk in, it's probably not enough protection for riding. Great point, understand completely. So I checked out a motocross boot, which is about the most protection you can get. Wildly uncomfortable, did not like it, was, was really pretty dead set against that. Plus, you can't find motocross boots that have waterproofing, or if you can, it's super rare. It's, it's weird styles, like it's all black or whatever. Just not what I was looking for. So I moved away from the motocross boot. I looked at uh, an ADV boot, right? So like a little bit more than the Garn, a lot less than the motocross boot, but still provided some some plastic around the ankle, some plastic up on the top, around the foot itself. Uh, just a little bit more sturdy environment for your foot to be in while you're riding through technical terrain, possibly against trees. I know that I had one in Utah where I fell over in snow and the bike came down on my foot and thank God, happened to catch right here instead of any higher. So the bike caught right under here and held my, my boot under the bike. I couldn't pull out. Uh, from the bike because it was holding on by just the sole and kind of underneath where my foot was sitting in the boot. But if it had been any higher, it would have crushed my foot without even thinking about it. It would have been, would have been crushed. So I need something more than that. And I'm looking at the ADV boot, which has the Gore-Tex, 
but doesn't have uh, really a ton of protection. It's a little bit, not a ton. Then I've got the motocross boot, which has got a ton of protection, but not the waterproofness and, and really wasn't comfortable at all. So what I ended up doing ultimately was getting both. So what I finally decided on was the CD. Now the CD is gonna be great for any sort of like long distance riding. We did a ride through uh, the Pennsylvania Wild BDRX, right? And I didn't have this at the time, but this would have been a great boot to ride that with uh, if I wanted to. This would be a great boot for my daily commutes, especially if it's raining. It's got Gore-Tex, it's comfortable. It's got a little bit of added plastic protection around here. so maybe something there's a there's a little hinge in there there's a heel plastic there's a little bit of side plastic the boot itself is just kind of a little bit more rugged than the garen uh, but this is as close as i can come to a touring boot that provides a little bit extra added protection right they call this an adv boot but uh, i would put it just a touch just a touch above uh, my Garen and what would be a completely on-road boot. You can ride a little bit of off-road, but I really wouldn't challenge it too much in this boot. But it is waterproof. This is perfect. For my trip down to Honduras in 2023 that I was going to make, more on that in a little bit, this would have been the boot I would have ridden because we weren't planning on going off-road. We were going to be on-road for most of it. We were definitely going to be going through rain and wet. So this probably would have been the boot that I wore for that trip. Now, when I'm going off-road for real, when I go to Brett Tax class again, whenever we do the Wyoming BDR or really any of the BDRs, this will be what I actually wear. Now this is the Liat 5.5. Uh, this is their motocross boot. This is nothing but plastic. This thing is a tank. It's heavy. It's super hard to, to walk in. Uh, it has almost no articulation in here. I mean, it is, that thing is solid. It squeaks like crazy. Um, it's got a bunch of buckles, really nice uh, base on it and everything, but it's not waterproof, right? So that was my big issue. Um, I learned to be okay with walking in this. I learned to be okay with wearing this. You just gotta kind of get used to it, right? Especially when you're coming from something like this, that's super easy to be in. This is gonna take a little bit of time, but you will get used to it. And if I can get used to it as somebody who loves comfort, you'll get used to it. It's worth it to protect yourself, especially if you're gonna be off-road in a situation where you might go down. You definitely don't wanna sacrifice your legs, your feet, anything like that when you're deep in the back country because that just screams dying out there. So uh, make sure that you have something pretty robust. Now, my issue with the motocross was that I wasn't sure if I was gonna be uh, liking the fact that it, it wasn't waterproof, right? And there's all sorts of kind of workarounds. You know, you can put your feet in plastic bags. You can, you know, try and scotch guard the boot itself and prevent your a little bit there. Uh, you can wear, you know, cover all type of stuff. All of those are options. Instead, I got a pair of these. Now, this video is brought to you by Sealskins. They sent these out to me for free. They did not tell me what to say. Uh, I did not know whether or not I would like these. It was just a really test, but uh, I wanted to let you guys know that if you're interested in going the motocross boot way, which I would suggest if you're gonna be off-road, this is an incredible workaround to maintain waterproofness, at least for your body, inside a boot that isn't waterproof. And if you don't wanna go the extra, you know, 200 bucks to put Gore-Tex inside something like this, this is fantastic. Now. My worry when I got these was that this membrane in here, because it's really, it's two pieces of fabric with a, me a membrane in the middle that's waterproof. I thought this membrane would be really obnoxious. I thought that it would be hot. I thought it would be kind of like you'd feel it on your feet, like you're wearing a rubber glove on your feet. Um, and it wasn't. I was surprised at how comfortable this was. The one thing I did wrong is I probably got a size too big. So I think I got the XL on this, I normally wear a size 13 and I got the XL as far as the size. Probably could have gotten the large and it would have been a little bit snugger on my foot because there is a little bit of wiggle room in this sock when I'm wearing it. Wasn't terrible, definitely not something that was annoying all day or that got to be a, a, an issue, but it's not as snug as my regular sock. So when I first put it on, you notice it, put it in the boot, it's gone, no big deal. But through everything that we rode through on the Pennsylvania BDRX and uh, the rains that I had on the way home, 
this sock performed incredibly well. And there's all sorts of YouTube videos you can see of people testing these out, just like literally putting a sock on their foot and stepping into a creek with like paper towels wrapped around their foot, pulling their foot out and the paper towels are dry. It's just, it's incredible that this works first. Uh, the other is that it's not uncomfortable. It doesn't feel hot. It doesn't feel uh, cumbersome on your foot. It takes care of everything that you need for a waterproof membrane layer over your, your body without really sacrificing much at all. I mean, if anything, maybe it's a couple ounces heavier than a regular sock, but that's about it. Now, uh, you can find the link down below to uh, purchase a pair, but the great thing also is they're not wildly expensive. I mean, they're expensive for socks, but they're not expensive for waterproofing. So I wanna say they're you know somewhere in the 40 to $60 range. So not terrible for a pair of socks. I have two of them that I took on the trip and really only used one. Uh, at the end of the day, if you want to, you know, uh, wash them a little bit, shake them out and let them dry overnight, they'll dry really, really quickly. But that's kind of how I handled my off-road trip going with a motocross boot. Now, if you're satisfied just doing the ADV boot, which I wouldn't suggest, but I completely understand because if I hadn't gotten both, I probably would have settled here. But because I wanted to get the motocross boot also, I didn't have to worry about only having this. Since you go with a motocross boot, or if you're thinking about going with a motocross boot, but want to add waterproof capability, seal skins will get you to that spot where you kind of have the best of all worlds. You'll have a super tough motocross boot. You'll have waterproofing capabilities without any of the issues. They make uh, heavier gauges and lighter gauges for like summer wear versus winter wear. So you can kind of adjust that also for whatever type of riding that you're looking to do or type of weather that you're looking to ride in. But I ultimately settled on the motocross boot because anytime that I'm off road, especially in a situation where injury is a, is a big problem, when you're back far enough that you can't get help, uh, if you're riding alone, I'm gonna opt for the motocross boot. Always in those situations. If I'm in a training situation, Really, if I'm in a place where I plan on falling, not just hope I don't fall, but actually it's gonna happen, it's likely to happen, I'm always gonna have a motocross boot on. When I'm doing that, I'm also gonna have a waterproof layer for that, that experience, and seal skins are the way that I'm gonna go. So those are some of my thoughts when I was looking at boots. Now, the real difficulty is if you're only going to get one, it really depends on the type of riding that you're gonna do, and I would always suggest that you swing more towards the safety side than the comfort side if you're only gonna get one. And the reason why is because you'll do hundreds of miles on the road where this boot would be great. You may only do 10 miles off road in the motocross boot, but the first time that you fall and you're in this boot instead of this one and your ankle gets crushed, you're gonna wish that you squeaked into a few more gas stations or uh, bothered to to get comfortable with an uncomfortable heavy boot because this will save a lot of that that hassle whereas this one is just always going to be comfortable so make this the second choice make the motocross boot the first choice i didn't make that choice i just went with both so that i've, I've got kind of all my bases covered but whatever is the most extreme version of the type of riding you're going to do eventually get a boot that covers you for that not than 90% of riding you're doing on the opposite side. Just the safety side of it. Hopefully nobody's crushing anything out there, but those are my thoughts. If you have any questions for me, if you have boots that you actually opt for in this category, if you think there's one that actually fits a lot nicer between these two, uh, definitely leave a comment down below. Let me know. If you wanna know anything more about seal skins, I can probably do a whole video just on this because I was really impressed. Now, uh, they didn't tell me what to say. They sent them out for free. I would have bought them on my own if they hadn't uh, because I knew that this was kind of a way to get everything that I wanted all in one. But uh, if you have any further questions or want to see more about the seal skins themselves, maybe even some tests, I'll be more than happy to do that. But for right now, just know that this is the way that I am going to be traveling anytime I'm in my motocross boot to get waterproof, and protection in all in one. That's my best, that's my best option at this point anytime I'm gonna be off-road. That's all I got for the boots. Thank you very much for watching. This channel is built all around adventure motorcycling. If you like that sort of thing, definitely subscribe, hit that bell so you get notifications every time we upload a new video. And always 
as I say here at Be Gone For Good, remember, the adventure starts with you, up here and in here. We'll see you in the next one. <laughs>